at this moment in Toastmasters, because it was April 25th, 2009 that I was competing in the international speech contest at the district level. I had no background or experience. I just liked my name of my speech was Returning a Jedi. I'm just a huge Jedi Star Wars fan. Anybody, any Star Wars fans in here? You guys should be sitting up front. <laughs> we'll work that out next time. But it was at that moment that I began to understand the power of storytelling. Show of hands, how many people here feel that they are storytellers? <coughs> Put your hands down. Everyone who didn't raise their hand, raise your hand. <laughs> You're now officially storytellers. <laughs> because what are stories? Anybody, what are stories? This is the interactive thing. What is storytelling? Our experiences. Your experiences. Where we learn, okay? Right, let me ask you. Go ahead, one more. Sharing our life. Sharing our life, okay? So let me ask you a question. Why should we learn how to tell stories? It's not about it being interested in learning. Okay? We all have stories to tell. Anybody else? Say again. Okay. Okay. Wonderful. The reason why we should study stories because stories are everywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, from the time you woke up this morning to the time you go to bed at night, you're inundated, surrounded by, covered in stories. You can't avoid them. But you watch television, listen to the radio, even if you don't have any connection to the outside world, world via electronic media, as Ben Laden has proved, you can communicate with the rest of the world. You can tell your stories. Storytelling is genetic. It's a part of our DNA. Now, we have people here from all walks of life, men, women, white, black, Hispanic, Asian, but I bet you there's one thing that all of us can tell, the same line. What was the first line that you heard as a child, when you were growing up. <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> Once upon a time. Once upon a time. What did that do? That set you up for a story. As soon as your mother, your father, your uncle, your grandmother, your grandfather said, Once upon a time. You were like, okay. I'm about to hear a story. Question, what do these, what do you, all of you have in common with some of these visions? Brand. The number one brand in the world, Apple. Sorry, PC users. Apple is the number one brand in the world. But what do you have in common with all those brands? Say that again, sir. They have a story. They all have stories. The key thing that you have to understand is they have a story to tell. And someone said here, we have stories to tell. So therefore, other than the money, there is no difference between any major corporation and yourself. We'll do a scientific experiment. Everyone look to your right, slowly pan back over to your left. Everything that you saw, come back center, everything that you saw from here to there is a story. The clothes you wear, the reason why you have your hair in that style, the shoes you bought, the person that you married, the person that you're ready to get rid of, you know why? Because they lost the story. And then if they want to get back with you, what do they have to Ladies, make a new story, guys. Make another one. Your old story's not working anymore. And it knows that simple. So what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about, I'm going to tell you the secret. This is my gift to all of you in Toastmasters. You take our notes. 
Church is, this is Sunday today for some of us. <laughs> because this is truly the secret. Once you understand the seven elements of a story, every story, whether it's a movie, a book, a play, a commercial, it was a good story that has these seven elements. Has anyone ever went to a theater, went to a movie, and the second you stepped over the threshold, you ask yourself, what the heck was that? Why did I see that movie? Do an experiment. Anyone has seen a movie, read a book, and then saw the movie that was made from the book? Raise your hand. And sometimes that movie didn't translate to what the book was, right? That's because it was missing one or more of the elements of the story. So what I'm going to give you today is law. Everybody, Madison Avenue, every commercial, all those companies know these seven elements, and guess what? At the end of this session, you're all gonna know the seven elements of storytelling. The first element is sound. Second element is passion. Third is the hero. And ladies, I'm not trying to be sexist. Hero means for you too. Hero. The fourth is the antagonist or obstacle. Fifth is awareness. is transformation. And the seventh is sound. And those of you who are in the fields that are very technical and detailed, I know I put sound twice, it's not a typographical error. Okay, there is a difference, and we'll, you'll see that by the end of the workshop today. Let's start with the first one. Every movie, Every book, every play, every commercial, everything that you've ever experienced in your life, every speech has a sound. Mozart. 
And the reason why that's important, that song was created, that piece was created from his Requiem Mass 200 years ago. And yet Comcast, in introducing their brand new Xfinity, state of the art, 3D system, started with that song. In fact, that was the whole commercial. Remember this commercial? All you saw was the frame. And you saw people jumping through the frame with that sound. All the millions of dollars that Comcast had, but they started their story with that sound. And at the end of it, the only thing they said was, nothing stands between you and a whole world of creepy entertainment. That's how powerful commercials and stories can be. They didn't need anything else. That was it. My friend, <laughs> Wolfgang Amadeus. The next element is passion. Now this is a family show, so we're not talking about that kind of passion. <laughs> but what kind of passion would you bring to a speech or to a story? What do I mean by passion? Enthusiasm. Emotion. Love. Okay, we get close, but no, okay, love, we'll work on that. First part of passion is the passion and energy that you tell the story with. What sounds desire? What sounds better? Four score and seven years ago. Or four score and seven years ago. Or to be or not to be. You know, that's the question. <laughs> or to be or not to be. That is the question. Passion. You have to have passion in your speeches for people to hear you. That's why commercials are so loud, because they need to get into your head. They need to wake you up because you're thinking about something else. They need to, that's why Comcast got that, because they, you needed to feel what their expensive television system can do for you. Right, it works Comcast. But the other part of passion is, passion is why you tell the story. That's really important, why you tell the story. Have you ever sat in a meeting and you're listening to this person give this speech and you're sitting there the whole time thinking, why in God am I here? <laughs> Hate to say that. Have you ever gone to a tough session in the universe and say, what was that person thinking about? <laughs> it wasn't because they, he or she wasn't speaking words. There was no passion. I don't care about snakes if you just don't really care about them. Or well, whatever you're into. It's just boring. It's just words. It doesn't mean anything. Passion. Third element is the hero. Now why, why is the hero important in a story? Any story. Anybody? Okay. Second? Okay. Focus. Say it again. Focus. What do you mean by focus? Okay, okay. The audience empathizes. Ah, say it again. Empathy. Empathize. Sometimes you have to put you know, people in the audience that know already. So thank you, friends. I'll give you money later on. <laughs> the hero is you. The hero is you. And like Chris said, the audience must be able to put themselves into your story. If you're telling a story about China, I'm not from China, but if someone from Chinese American descent talked to me about what it meant to be Chinese, I need to be able to relate to that story. Because guess what? Being poor in China means the same thing as being poor in Harlem, New York. So I'm from Harlem, New York. I'm like, oh, I can get with that. I mean, I maybe didn't eat rice every day, but I had peanut butter and jelly. That's kind of the same thing. <laughs> if you're telling a story and not, when you write your speeches, Toastmasters, you have to write it from two points of view. You have to write it from here, and you have to write it from here. Because am I talking to her? Am I talking to her? If I write a speech about what it means to be a man, and I have a whole audience of women, 
that's not going to help. That's not going to help me. Well, let me tell you what it feels like to put on a jock strap. The lady's like, I don't care about that. <laughs>
from a seven elements point of view. There's that scene where Batman, those of you who don't know the story, Batman was actually terrified of bats. His parents died, he fell in a hole, a cave, and there were bats there. Years later, after he got all kinds of training, he went down, back down into that cave, and there's this one pivotal scene when he realizes, he holds the lights up, he hears a sound, he holds the lights up, and there are thousands, thousands and thousands of bats all around him. He gets down into a fetal position, and once he becomes aware of who he was, he extends out his hands and embraces the fear and embraces who he was. It was those, it's the part of the movie where it's the Eureka moment. It's the part of the movie where you say, aha! And all the action adventure, not all of them, but a lot of the action adventure movies have that. When, when, when Luke Skywalker was hanging on that precipice, he was standing there and his father said, no, I am your father. And he had the choice of either joining Darth Vader, the most evilest man in the whole universe, or jumping down into the precipice. That was his awareness moment. He had to make that decision. Yes, ma'am. I think an awareness moment is always when the music gets very, very loud. <laughs> <laughs> Very good point. Hollywood often helps us out. To tell us what the, like, hello, this is the moment, guys. You need to stop eating your popcorn and watch this moment. In fact, even in Batman Begins, it's a very powerful soundtrack, just that moment. But that's the moment that you feel in your heart, yeah. That's the moment, Karate Kid, when he's standing there and he, and he does that. That's awareness. We've all seen it. But the purpose of this workshop is to break it down, and so this way it will empower you to do the same thing in your speech. You begin to hear your own voice. You begin to hear who you are. All the things that your mother told you, all the things that people told you that you were, when you get to that awareness moment, you realize, yeah, okay, okay. That's the moment why most of you are here in Toastmasters. You could have gone on and just continued to speak any way you wanted to speak. But you knew, even if it's just something inside of you, you knew that you wanted to speak better. You wanted to get your story across in a way that would reach people. So all of you are in a state of awareness, or semi-awareness, right now. Transformation. Tell me about somebody, somebody without religious, because it's, it's a different, it's semi religious, but tell me about transformation. What does that mean? What does that word mean to you? Change. Change? change. 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 There you go. All the things that has happened beforehand, all the obstacles you overcome. You make new discoveries about yourself. That's what happens to us as Toastmasters. Isn't that true? <clears throat> we start out with the CC manual. I joined in January 2009. The area government at the time said, we're going to have an international speech contest. I had quit Toastmasters. I was actually in two Toastmasters in October 2007. I did two speeches and said, I don't need this. I don't mind talking. What's the big deal? Came back. They said, there's going to be an international speech contest. As a Marine, I said, oh, I'll try that. Why not? Next thing I knew, I'm at the district level. There was six, 700 people there, and I'm talking about something that I've been thinking about for 33 years, Star Wars. And some of you were there, and I came in second place, but the best part about that was seeing Lisa McGee going like this in the back. <laughs> Having people come up to me and say, oh my God, I love Star Wars. Now I do that same speech, and I had a woman that was 90 years old, 90 years old. She comes to me and she says, young man. I said, yes, ma'am. She says, I want to tell you something. I said, what's that? She says, I'm a Jedi. <laughs> I think it was like division level. 
Uh, I started at Christ University Chapel Club number three. And there's a pastor there who's a Toastmaster. She says to me, she was sitting there, she listened to the speech. Afterwards, she comes to me and says, Barry, I'm a little disappointed. And you know, me and my track record with God, I know I'm on a waiting list, so when somebody will ever say she's disappointed, I'm like, okay, what now? And she says, I thought you were going to talk about Luke. And I said, Luke? I don't even know where Luke is in the Bible, but man, I, you know, I'm not skilled enough in the Bible to know about Luke. She says, no, I thought you were talking about Luke Skywalker. The woman's 70 years old. That's when I began to realize, wow, you mean this really means something? Transformation is when you change the world. Ladies and gentlemen, do you realize that the speeches that you have the opportunity to do at your club can potentially change the world? Whether you like Barack Obama or not, who was this guy? I saw when he did a, a uh, graduation. He did the fall, oh, my name is funny, I'm thinking, well, yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> he changed the world. Maybe not as quick as some other people would like, but he's there. He's done things because of the sound of his voice. Think about it. Transformation. The next and last part, I need a little help from another one of my friends. Peter Tchaikovsky. Does anybody know about the story of Tchaikovsky? Tchaikovsky was... He was special, like little yellow school bus special. That's why I like him. <laughs> um, he had talent. Anybody can relate to it being on the yellow little yellow school bus? You have to tell, no, you have to tell nobody. See, I don't, I'm proud of it. I right in front. But he was going through all kinds of things in his life. His marriage failed. He was bankrupt. He actually had mental problems. In fact, he was getting ready to commit suicide before he wrote a very famous song that all of you know. July, 4th of July, what is the music that he normally play? Come on. Dun, 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 dun. We all know, even if you didn't know what it was, you know that song, that piece. It's actually, the czar had asked him to compose that. In fact, one of his friends, before he was ready to commit suicide, or was really seriously thinking about it, said, you know what, didn't this all ask you to I'll tell you what, why don't you go ahead and do that and kill yourself, okay? He <laughs> just wanted to give him something to do. Nathan <laughs> Trump Overture actually commemorates Russia defending Moscow against the French, especially Napoleon. They had about a million troops to a small ragtag group or army of Russian soldiers. He did it in about six, six weeks. The thing that you don't know is the part that you hear on the 4th of July, that's just a very small part. It's actually 16 minutes and 59 seconds long. But the real story of it is in the last four minutes. The last four minutes of the 1812 Overture, the reason why so many of us remember that song is because of the story that you hear and you don't even realize that you're actually hearing every, every element of the seven elements of the story. So, with your permission, I'm going to, and to help with Tchaikovsky, I'm going to just let you listen to the last four minutes of the 1812 Overture, but I'm going to give you a little hint. I'm going to take you through all seven elements, and we'll talk about the sound, because to explain sound, that second sound, you need to hear it. When I work with my clients, my storytelling clients, I make them listen to this first, because you need to hear what sound means. Then we can start working on your script. Okay, ready?
give you that direction, give you and tell you where it starts to go. Then you come into passion. You feel it. You can almost see the guy in the
the elements should come together at the end. Your story, if you're talking about, he's not here today, Raghu. Raghu did a speech once and he was talking about water. Water. But when he spoke about water and just how wasteful we are about water and how our water footprint, I went home and started thinking about the clothes I buy, the things I do, the way we waste water because I felt him. It all came together in that speech. Your speech is your brain. Don't leave Toastmasters. Don't continue to do these speeches and not have a brand. I should be able to look at you. What's your name? David. David. After hearing certain David's speeches, I should be able to know, you know what? If you want a powerful speaker, you need to call David. If you want a sad speech, you need to call this person. If you want a humorous speech, you need to call, you need to do a brand. No different than Apple, Google, eBay, FedEx. Again, my name is Barry Dixon. I'm the owner of the Gem Hunter, Gemological and Storytelling Services. Art, Science, History, Magic. I thank you so much for coming here today. It is an honor to share this with you because this is what I discovered here in Toastmasters. Thank you. Yeah. you have Even if in a spiritual way, if somebody, 
if somewhere in here was deaf, you can, read a, you can feel words. When you read a book, don't you still hear the sound of the words? It's, it's, a, it's a metaphysical thing. That's where you should start. When you start, the first part just said, yeah, there's a, there's a spirit, there's a tone, there's a direction that you should go. Versus, so when a movie or, again, commercials, they got 30 seconds to hit you. They don't have a lot of time. That's when you'll start to hear your sound, start doing, look at movies, listen to music, and start listening to all seven elements. And I bet you, you can, whatever movie you like, what's your name, sir? Friend, tell me your favorite movie you have. Say again? Groundhog Day. You still have a hero? You still have passion? He needed to get out of there. It was just repetitive. He has the obstacle. What was the obstacle? His day was repeating every day until he kept trying to get to that girl. And eventually he had the transformation awareness that he had to just do something else. And then there was a transformation. And then after that, he was able to get to January 2nd. See, it's real easy. Once you understand this, you can just brace like a cookbook. Two tablespoons of sugar, one tablespoon of sugar. Just like that. But you need to hear it. This particular speech that you gave today centers around two classical composers. Were you classically musically trained, or what made you? And all of you know, no. <laughs> Excellent question. 
Is there any difference between doing it in front on the stage, in front of people, or doing it on the phone, or even writing it? No. No. A story, again, any stories, movies, music, a play, a book, a commercial, a conversation with your wife or your husband, you need these seven elements. You're talking to your child. You need these seven elements because that's how that child will remember. All of us who have had memories of our grandfather, that's because they told you what? Story. My grandfather told me this story. And you remember, your teacher told you a what? Story. Any teachers in here? Okay. In fact, let me tell you the power of this. CPS is asking me to teach because I do a lot of gemology stuff in the school. So they want me to, and I do stories, so they want me to teach middle school for a CPS turnaround school. And there's a big competition, they will pay for my master's degree. There's 2,000 people competing for this. I have the advantage. One, because I'm a Toastmaster. So of the 2,000 people, maybe 10 Toastmasters, so let's not eliminate them. <laughs> Know how to tell a story. So when they say, Mr. Nixon, why do you want to teach? I'm already thinking, what's the, what's the steps? What's the sound? Because I'm already figuring out what kind of voice do I know? They in AUSL, they want you to have a strong voice. So I'm saying, my story is, I'm going to start out with a strong voice. My passion in the way I bring up, I want to teach because I'm, this is my point in my life where I have to teach. I'm the hero. I'm the hero. I'm the teacher. My obstacle is, yes, there are kids that are three or four grade levels behind. That's my obstacle. The awareness is making them aware that science is fun. And how did I get it? Because I went to turnaround schools living in the ghettos of New York in the South Bronx. And my awareness was, even as a homeless person, that I didn't have to live like this anymore. I didn't have to, even though I couldn't sing and dance out there, but there was somebody that wanted to learn about biochemistry. I just needed to find that one person. And the transformation, well, you're just looking at the transformation. You can do it in six seconds. You can do it in 30 seconds. You can do it in two minutes and seven minutes and 30 seconds. Just give me the, how much time do you need? How much time are you giving me? No problem. Does that answer your question? When you talk on the phone, hi, honey, and just stop. I'm late because, hello. Yeah. 
that's the part. When you, okay, let me ask you a question. When you start your speeches, where did your speeches start from? Your heart or your head? Where did you start your speeches? Where did you start your speeches? Okay, bring it, bring it. Where did you start your speeches? What speech are you on? Oh, where I No, 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 no. Okay, first question. What speech are you on? In the Toastmaster? Man's Communicator Bronze. Oh, good. All right. Good. You fall right in the trap. Now, so you've already written 10 speeches, 12, 15 speeches. Where do you start your speeches when you begin to write? You're going to write your next speech. Where do you start? Your hand or your heart? Well, actually, I'm going to say, 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 I'm going to